Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just feel like I need to ask this question. Mr. Fonzon, you, when you advised the companies referenced Huawei and others, you were at Sidley? Yes, that's right, sir. And, and when, when a client comes to Sidley, you have to fill out a form that says, you know, here's my client name, here's my mailing address for, for business purposes, and here are my political beliefs. Is that the way it works? There's definitely a client intake process. I'm, I'm not, I don't remember all the particulars of it. I mean, big law kind of, it's yeah. kind of like who can pay the freight, right? Um, that's an aspect of the, okay. of the intake process, I'm sure. I understand. Uh, Professor, I'm looking at a letter dated March 16, 2020. It's a letter to government, Governor Lamont in Connecticut. The title of it is Urgent Action Needed to Protect Individuals in Connecticut's Prisons and Jails from Coronavirus-19 Pandemic. Did you sign that letter? So I don't recall sitting here today, here, Senator. Here's your signature. Here, here is back here. Why didn't you turn this over to us uh, when you were asked to submit documents? So, Senator, I made every effort to search for everything that I had ever signed. That's not a letter I re remember, um, but I will certainly take a look at that. And well, we, we found it was with a search on the Internet. So I apologize, Senator. That it, I apologize. In your I letter to the governor, you, here's what you say. As they stand, prisons and jails are detrimental to public health and human rights and disproportionately harm marginalized communities, including black, brown, indigenous, and other communities of color, immigrants, people with mental illness, people with disabilities, people in the LGBTQ plus community, people who use drugs, people engaged in sex work and street economies, and people experiencing houselessness and poverty. So if you believe that about our prisons, how are you going to ever send somebody to prison? So, Senator, um, I will need to take a look at that letter, and I apologize that that's not something I found to, to, um, uh, you know, to hand to this committee. You're not I can, denying you said that. Um, I do need to see the letter to see the context, because, again, it's not something I remember adding my name to. Yeah. Um, I can assure you, right. Senator. And uh, you also say... First, you call on Governor Lamont to, um, to, to release everybody in jail. Is that right? Because of the coronavirus? So again, Senator, I would need to see that letter in front of me. It certainly was not. You can find it with, a, just put your name in, in, in the Google. You'll find it in about three nanoseconds. I will, Senator. I can assure you that I. I you, said, you said in your letter, Professor. We call on Governor Lamont, State of Connecticut, and all Connecticut jurisdictions to immediate release to the, back, to the maximum extent possible people incarcerated pre-trial and post-conviction. And then you go on to say, talking once again about our jails, the global COVID-19 pandemic is throwing into sharp relief the untenable state of our penal system and the need for sustained action to shrink it shrink its scale, shrink its size, and shrink its scope. You, you sound here like the district attorney in San Francisco. If you believe that, how are you going to ever send us anybody to jail, Professor? I can assure you, Senator, that I understand the role of the judge and that I can assure you prison time is an appropriate sentence in That's many cases. That's not what cases. you say here to the governor. You wrote the governor. This isn't some... DoorDash delivery guy. You wrote the governor of your state three years ago. So again, I'm Senator, in law school. So again, Senator, I would need to look at the letter. It sounds like it was written um, at the height of the pandemic, where governors were looking for. You also wrote the governor. You said people over the age of 55 are at the greatest risk for COVID-19, but also pose the least public safety risk. To our communities, people in this age group can and should be released immediately to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. 
You think the governor just, if you're over age of 55, he should let everybody go? Uh, no, Senator. That's not a position. That's what you said. Okay. There it I is, biggest house. Again, Senator, I, I will look at that letter. I can assure you that... Find it on Google, Professor. Um, you also say Governor Lamont should issue an executive order to direct the state's attorney, attorney offices and law enforcement entities, including the town and city police departments, and any federal law enforcement entity operating within the state to immediately cease adding to the incarcerated prison population given the high risk of infection posed by the population increase. You ask the governors to tell every, every law enforcement official in the state to stop arresting people and putting them in jail, didn't you? So again, Senator, I have to look at that letter. I, um, I, I do think there were modifications that the governors were making around the country to respond okay. to the you also pandemic. Had an opinion in your letter about, can I have another 30 seconds, Mr. You had an opinion in your letter about, about immigration. You said Immigra immigration detention poses the same health risk to jails and prisons, and Connecticut law enforcement must stop feeding people into the unsafe and inhumane immigration detention system. Then you say Governor Lamont should release all individuals currently in state custody who are awaiting transfer to, to ICE custody and the governor should declare a moratorium on all on all such future transfers how if somebody is in our country illegally and commits a crime are you going to put them in jail if you believe this about immigration senator i can assure you were i so fortunate to be confirmed i would treat crimes seriously That's not what this letter says professor and it was three years ago it wasn't when you were in law school and you didn't turn it over to us we had to find it on our own. Senator, the chair has been generous in time. I think you've had uh, your opportunity. Would you like to complete your sentence or st statement? Thank you, Senator. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off, but Dick was going to cut me <laughs> off. So I, I understand. And I, I apologize. I made every effort to find um, anything that I had been associated with. Um, I, so... There were many, many um, emails and internet searches and otherwise that, that I did. I apologize um, if this is something I missed. It sounds like it was a letter that um, many people signed on to it. I will certainly review that and um, supplement my, my submissions to the committee. So I apologize, Senator, for, for having missed that. Let me suggest that you get a copy of the letter and respond for the record in writing as to what the nature of the letter was and what your position was. And let me also add, it was under the Trump administration which we made, where we made decisions here that the Federal Bureau of Prisons would release at, at least uh, under supervision thousands of inmates because of the worry over the public health crisis which we faced. 